All right, well, we're at three inches of rain today, which is about six centimeters. This is my front yard, which uh, I can't really use my finger to point. I got cardboard over my phone. Uh, this is where I re-sculpted this water flow and planted some Bermuda sod. And we're definitely overflowing here, but it's holding a lot of water. It's catching all the runoff from my driveway. So uh, it does fill up pretty quick. Let's go to the uh, diversion swell area. My second water tank is overflowing. I got it piped into this on a recent video. Um, anyway, I'm not finished with it yet. So the vetiver swell is full. I was going to point out, if you look at my vetiver off to the left, it's greener. And I got a feeling that where I've got the uh, mulch there, it's the, the swell is significantly deeper. I was kind of letting it push the water off to the left. But uh, as you can see, I mean, it definitely helped to hydrate things because it's even the grass is much more greener over there. Not just the vetiver itself, but the grass. But uh, we did have a, like I said, with this amount of rain, we've tested the whole system. This right here is uh, the swell that's just totally filled in with wood chips. You can see a little open area here. Kind of shows me the height of the water. But uh, this is the first test of my redesigned diversion swell. So the water, the water was shooting down to my shop. I wish I could use my finger. Let me try this. Water was shooting out over here, so I increased the embankment, filled in the swell here to push the water this way. I've got one, one or two little breaches that uh, I'll be able to go back and fill. But we've got, we definitely got water flow into the Waffle Terrace system. So all that, it's all designed to push the water this way and take it straight down to my waffles. Let's go take a look at it. I ran out here earlier in the full rain and it was just a river. So I got a little concerned that you know the dams the dams between the waffles are compacted ground naturally compacted ground we just dug holes out but I was a little concerned it was going to wash it out anyway it definitely did the cleaning job I was hoping it would do but I was like I said concerned it was going to actually take out the little dammed areas now like I said these are if Frank did it correctly that was untouched soil naturally compacted soil oh my gosh look at that I don't know if you watched the last video it's too wet I can't look at this look at that pond is oh my gosh look at that let's get down there and look at it oh my gosh let me reposition real quick guys Okay, so we're at the we're at my paved road. So this is my first pocket pond that I'm using to clean out the water and sediment. Uh, it's full. It's overflowing. Going into my actual sediment pond, which is full and overflowing. And this hasn't happened in like three years, so this is like super exciting. Here's all the water coming in from the Waffle Terrace. So as you can see here, we got this flow here that's on a, that's a culvert, so it's coming on the other side of the road. This flow over here is on this side of the road, so that's two different water flows converging here. And then we have the terrace system converging here. There's so much water coming into it, that's why I felt I could hold more water in the terrace with the waffles, because this is, this is a lot of flow. We're going to get a test on... Uh, this overflow here, an event like this a few years ago, it actually washed all the rocks down and I had to rebuild it, but I put in little chunks of uh, gravel between the rocks to kind of lock it in. You can see the little rocks there. So as you can see, all the rocks are holding good. So that's awesome. I think uh, when I did my water test on the pond, I said, look at that concrete culvert. Anyway, it's gone. 
Oh my gosh, this is so great. Anyway, let's see what the overflow looks like in the pond. The, this is the new pond, a big pond, the one that Zach built with the uh, elementary, elemental ecosystems. Uh, I think his YouTube channel is Water Stories. He's a great guy. You should see some of the work he's done. But this whole uh, overflow was designed to be wide and slow. I mean, they actually went through here when they were building it, made sure this, this was all level. And he just wanted a soft flow out. And then we'll see where it uh, where it comes back in. Look at that. This is amazing. We definitely got overflow on the one log dam, which is something I've been excited about. Look at that. So here's all the water coming out. I mean, it's a freaking river. You can see, I can't really pan in and out because the screen's wet, but I have been adding the log from a hugo culture over here. Um, and I do have a rock dam over here and it's holding water. But the overflow from here, so it it meanders around here, nice and level. And then we got this rock structure here to keep erosion from happening. And this is a log dam, which really, uh, I mean, I think it, uh, or brush brush dam. I'm sorry. I might need to fix this get the water all flowing in here I'm not sure but that's gonna erode away since it doesn't have a rock area so I'll need to fix this which is why it's good to come and film out like this but anyway this is a brush dam you can see all the sediment it's picking up uh, it just taking cleaner water downstream but there again I need to continue this out and I need to stop this flow here which I think if you can see uh, Zach built a little dam there to push it through. I just need to can take it out a few more yards, kind of force all that water in. That's an easy fix with the equipment I have. All right, let's get to the one log dam. Okay, we're at the one log dam and it's it's not the beauty I designed it to be. The, uh, the log is going across here and I cut V notches in here on a softer flow the water just coming out of those v-notches and the reason for the v-notches is keep the water flowing out in the middle not around the edge but so far it looks like it's holding fine it hasn't if it breaches up and around here it could erode the uh, soil underneath the rocks and uncap the whole system but it's basically just a ash juniper log kind of cut into the ground and capped with two big old rocks um, like I said, so far, I don't even see any signs that it breached over here. You'd see some debris and stuff. It looks like it got close. But uh, that's pretty awesome. This is another brush dam. And I'm curious if I have a height difference here. Let's see. Uh, I mean, maybe a couple of inches of height differential here. But anyway, there again, that's... Look at all that stuff right there. It's filtering that in the system, out of the system. So I got another pond down here. So it's keeping all that debris out of the pond. Got a lot of foaming over here. Got a lot of aeration, aera aeration happening here. It's foaming. But that's pretty cool so I got a little waterfall here this is probably four or five feet deep here I, I was taking dirt out of here when I needed some soil figured uh, it would fill back in before it got to the pond anyway the pond we had to walk over there but I don't think it's quite overflowing yet which means you know we've had three inches of rain and we've caught every drop this is like the last this is the last stop before it exits onto the highway, so 
when it overflows I'm losing water off the property but until then I've saved every drop and kept it here see if I can uh, cross this little river here go take a look at the big swell we're real close to it When I haven't talked about the uh, encroachment pond, we basically, it, everything got so dry, it was the, the dirt was just a powder and uh, we couldn't really take the dirt and compact it down on the dam, so we just moved off that project completely. But after the half inch of rain, I drove a tractor over it uh, and I didn't sink in, so we got good compaction. But after this, after this event today, it, it may have breached and Put a big hole in it let's see what's happening with the big swell the big swell is full that's pretty cool i want to check on a couple of other things real quick the mound pond is probably overflowing which is the one we just made bigger and i hadn't really finished the overflow on it so let's go uh see what happened over there Okay, we we're walking downstream, now we're gonna walk upstream. This is my little, uh, I call a 100 year flood plain that I just kind of put a berm across here and hoping it would fill in a little bit with some rich soil. I mean, it is flowing over around that water hose, but there again, you can see all the debris it's, it's catching. So this hole will start filling in, which is what I wanted it to do. Uh, this is the original road through my property and I, had dug a hole here and I had dug a hole here I'm not using this road but uh, you can see this is all full we're gonna head over to the uh, to the, the new road I'm building which should have breached and some of the, uh, the mound pond and then we'll make it to the encroachment pond so yesterday I actually took the the excavator and compacted this road since we had some moisture from that half inch rain and it's actually well I could do most of it this this area here was all sopping wet I couldn't I couldn't compact it but it looks like looks like it's pretty much staying together but you can see all the water I mean I wanted this road to dam up a little bit of water let's go over to the uh, the horses pocket pond I mean, it's overflowing. Overflowing in the wrong spot. Look at that. That's why you got to come out and look. We are overflowing here where I put the rocks, but it busted out right here. So I'll need to dam this up a little bit higher. I wanted to, well, you know what? Because of the culvert that's going to go over here, that's probably the best spot for it to overflow. So maybe we'll just cut in an overflow there. Uh, I don't have to use this gate because this, this little paddock has two gates and this road is going to go straight up to the gate. Anyway, that's a good mental note is let's just do it right there and cap this one off. Yep, everything is full. This is the event we're looking for. We're well over three inches by now. We just this morning this little pocket pond here we just dumped some gravel on because we never locked in the rocks I, I don't know if he spread them out or not or just dumped it but uh, looks like I haven't lost any of the big rocks there but it was kind of an emergency thing I tried to do this morning then uh, I'm excited about the mound pond I did uh, halfway cut an overflow yesterday while I had the excavator out There we go. And this is the one that, that holds water. I mean, everything else out here, all these little pocket ponds, they just soak the water in, but this one actually holds water. But it looks like it's, uh, I mean, I need to level it off. I was gonna do it this morning, but then we got the notice that we we're probably gonna get rain real, real quick. But I need to just level off that, that overflow and line it with rocks. But it is definitely full. I mean, it's overflowing over there. Well, let me get to the encroachment pond, which is probably busted through the dam that I put on because we never got back to it. Those two piles of dirt right there from my hoover culture, I'm 
taken apart. I'm just going to use that to kind of fill in over here. It's kind of a low swampy area and I'd love to have some pasture grass in here. Anyway, I knew I was low on this side and high on this side. I grabbed a four foot level and I was going to come out here and this morning and do it. But like I said, the, the rain just came before I could get to it. But it's holding together. I mean, it, uh, like I said, with the amount of rain, it gushed pretty good. Okay, well, this is the last one. This is the encroachment pond. And just a quick recap. We had to stop on it because it was just too powdery dry. We couldn't compact it. But we have got half inch of rain, and I was able to drive a tractor over it without sinking in, which is pretty cool. We used the excavator to compact it as Frank was bringing me uh, soil with a skid steer. But the overflow is intended to be about right there which is on native ground, un or compacted ground. But we just didn't get the, the dam built high enough before the, everything was just powder and we couldn't compact it. And then th these are the, uh, this is the brush that we had to, uh, the trees we had to take down to build this. And I call this an encroachment pond because the government's taking this land to, to widen this highway over here. So from my property line all the way to this mobile home to about the center of the mobile home, that's all going to be highway here in a few years, but I decided to, you know, I, I bought an excavator and just, I figured I could uh, play here. If I made a mistake, no big deal because it was going to go away. But, uh, yeah, this is, uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can see the brownness. That's what we've been dealing with for the last three months. You know, anyway, uh, I think if I film in about two weeks, this is all going to be green. And the sad part is yesterday I threw out seed i planted a uh, oat wheat rye brassicas peas kind of a fall winter mix i spread it on my whole acreage and uh looks like i'm gonna have to do it again because i'm sure the seeds got washed down into big clumpy areas anyway thanks for tuning in this was the event we were looking for this is the the real test the big rain event you know if we're going to be um, if the world has changed where we're going to get a lot a, a few major events a year versus a lot of little rains a year we're going to have to capture as much water as we can and that's what i'm trying to do here on my acreage here anyway you guys have a great day